Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Geeks Vinyl Live. It's really good to see you all. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, I'm afraid that we've had some tech issues this evening, so thank you very much for bearing with us. I really appreciate it. We don't normally live stream on a Friday night. I thought I'd give it a go for a few practical reasons, but also just testing a couple of things out. But I have to say, I don't like Fridays. Tell me why. Because I don't like streaming on Fridays. Tell me why. Because the tech all fails. Tell me why. That's all I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to mute you now. <laughs> there you go. You even got a song for me on a Friday night. That's that's the kind of evening it has been already, frankly. Um, do you think I'm as good a singer as Ken Heron? Let me know in the chat. Uh, but it's really good to see everybody. Thank you so much for, for popping in and seeing us, especially as it's not a regular evening. We will be back to our Thursday night, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you know all about we've got some very exciting live streams coming up next week. Uh, which I, I shall let you all know about. Max Air 420, thank you very much for being one of the early birds. Uh, drone Viral, Novice Quads, Lawrence, great to see you, sir. Johnny DRC, El Smeghead. Hi, Andy. I normally talk to Andy quite a lot on Messenger, actually. I haven't, so sorry, Andy. I have I did see your messages coming early. It's great to see you here. Uh, Jim Beauchart, hi, great to see you as well. Mike Drennan, Johnny DRC. Um, and uh, who else do we have here? Let me go down the list. We've got some cool, cool people. Uh, have I mentioned everybody yet? With there's some guy called the Flyby guys. I not don't I don't know who he is. They can't hear you at the moment. Flatlands Aerial Photography, good to see you as well. It's probably going to be one of those streams, to be fair, because uh, it's already started that way. Just before I came live, everything broke and I had to restart everything. Uh, we we lost Stephen. Um, I think that his booster seat fell off his chair, um, so he had to wait for someone to come and help him up back up on it so um red night 19 good to see you um airless me good to see you as well andrew mcquillan with his microphone emoji now interestingly andrew you don't appear to be a a channel member i think you're a channel member under your crowded space drones account actually but uh because then you'd have the proper microphone emoji that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. You're, you're still muted, but I'll bring you in in a second. Uh, Andy Becky, I'm doing that thing of being on air and having conversations with people off air that no one can hear. Uh, so coming up tonight, we have got a very action packed show for you. Um, I, I promise there'll be no more singing from me at least, or you know, yeah, yeah, we'll see how the night goes. Actually. Um, we're going to start off with a little bit of news chat. We've got a, a few stories that I want to talk about with the panel uh, and get their opinion on a few things. Uh, this includes, um, uh, some of the news stories that we have been covering recently to i want to hear what the panel have to say on a couple of things as well um and then we have got the top five tips to find more places to fly your drone here in the uk which is uh, becoming a very important thing to do so i wanted to share some of my experience of how i find places to fly and give that advice to you guys and then we'll be talking about the a2 cfc and asking if it's dead after 2022 once the the legacy drones um um uh, period ends so that'll be interesting won't it so uh, without further ado we have the three amigos back together this evening now let's let's hope all these buttons work hi guys how are you yeah very funny <laughs> did you did you pass a note to each other or something and say hey 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 let's wind him up <laughs> i genuinely didn't <laughs> oh, that, that worked really well actually thanks can i can i just say thank you both i really appreciate it uh that's that's and we're more than happy to help ellis mean uh, thank you very much for becoming a member of the yeah. drone club uh welcome to the channel members you get sort of lots of behind the scenes videos and that type of thing we've got a members meet up on monday evening as well which you get to come and talk to me directly and tell me how bad i am at uh, youtubing uh, in a zoom call which is good fun but we can chat drones uh, we can chat most things frankly but it'll be good fun uh, and I, I look forward to to seeing you all then if you want to become a channel member as airless mean just did um there is a little join button below the video uh, and there's also a link in the description below as well so that's exciting so how are you guys really really i have a really good theme that you can call the monday show tell me why Yes, I love the, I love the fact that your your Wi-Fi went then, and <laughs> your, your 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 voice broke completely, and you froze just as you were telling me about the. I did, it, did it. Yeah, it's one of those nights already. It's 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 really one of those nights. It is. It is. It is. <sighs> it is. I yeah. can't believe I'm the most competent here. Steady. <laughs> I, 
I can't. I can't believe that either. <laughs> I can't believe it's not butter. Okay. I want to. I want to thank very firstly, uh, very firstly, very quickly, our our first sponsor of the evening, uh, Moonrock Drone Insurance. They now have the hobby dot Moonrock um, uh, Insurance dot com, so you can get your hobbyist quotes now in the UK as well, uh, which is very very exciting. You go along here, you enter your little little drone model in here, whichever it put all the little individual models, and you obviously you press get a quote, and then you put all your details in, which I'm not going to do because uh, obviously um, I'm not going to give all my personal details out on air. You think I'm, you think I'm stupid? Uh, but moonrockinsurance.com, uh, hobby.moonrockinsurance.com. I've just put the link in the description to go along and get your quotes. It helps the channel out an awful lot, actually. So thank you very much uh, to Moonrock for being one of our sponsors. And um, the first shout out of the evening to our other sponsor, of course. Uh, which that that worked really well. Oh, I'm, fr- I'm in front of it. Oh no, I'm going to try and then that work it behind. There you go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> He's um, a good boy. Drone master. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. <laughs> Drone masterclass. Uh, book your A2 CFC or GVC now. There is a link in the description to DroneMasterclass.co.uk. Uh, so do head on down there. I will also very quickly pop that in the chat as well. Um, Stephen, it looked like when you're leaning down to the microphone, then the, do your Sexy talk. It looks like you're whispering in his ear. It looks like you're 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 polishing his head. Uh, I think we might have a frustrated singer in our midst. You know, I think I think Stephen might actually be a. I'm still waiting for the the karaoke bar session for the three of us. Karaoke. We we, we should live. We can live stream that. There's some really good ones in Soho. Yeah, I'm down. I think. uh, I think we'll. I think. I think we'll be doing that at some point. Yeah. Yeah, I am 100% down. Definitely. Okay, so we're going to start off this show with a, with a new little uh, uh, section of, of the show, because w- why not start something new on a show where there's been no technical problems whatsoever? <laughs> that, that, to me, is like the best time to try a new thing and to try bringing like, news stories in and that type of thing. So um, here is the weekly uh, news chat, episode one, I suppose, uh, which is, again, that is sponsored by DroneMasterclass.co.uk for your A2CFC uh, or your GBC right now. So I'll bring up the news stories, and really, I just want to get your guys' um, uh, opinion. On a couple of these did you both hear about this particular story yes so just to bring the audience up to date who haven't heard about this uh, we did a live stream on this uh, earlier in the week. thank you very much everybody for joining me for for the one of the new impromptu live streams and this is where as as the new york post puts it drone slams into a uh, building in the world trade center complex uh, pilot in custody let's have a little listen to uh, to what the chap had to say I'm out here from Dallas, Texas, and essentially what just happened uh, over the past like four hours was I four hours wow. flew my drone into the World Trade Center. So um, I, uh, I saw this fountain over there, and you know, thought it was pretty cool looking. Um, sat down in a bench right in front of it, started setting up the drone. Is that police officer doing an impression of pretending to be a drone? going to take an orbital shot. <laughs> Your mic and, is still hot, by the way, on this new setup. Uh, the circle of the orbit was just a little bit too big. Yeah, we, we can't hear the audio, just, you know. And, yes. Like, right before it crashed into that building. Um, Lucky there's subtitles. That, it's just like he's... It's you know, like... It was backed up a little bit. <laughs> crash in that building? Well, well you it's, stop yeah, it you were doing that. Uh, by that time, um, uh, well, the drone was pretty much gone. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> and and basically he he goes on to say that um um that essentially he tries to explain it away that it was explained that it would be too much hassle to get the drone down. Um, yeah. um that there'll be a link to all these stories um in isn't the description that, below after isn't this. Isn't that a problem? Is it, is it getting the drone down half the, half the flight anyway? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's like, well, it, it, it surely every wedged. pilot has that issue. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, it became wedged between two panels, and basically, right. um, um, uh, my my issue with that is is there's no way they were, they were planning on leaving that. So his sort of witness account, as you were as you were saying, Steve, um, Andrew, it's it's kind of more like a witness account than the actual pilot. Um, it kind of falls down at that stage because I don't think they'd have said, "Yeah, we'll leave it there. It's okay. You know, it's only a little lipo battery." um that, 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 that that's potentially damaged and 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 could create a fire frankly so hey what, what's a little lipo fire between friends and i wonder if there'll be more civil action and more other things happening uh, as that goes on he did get a ticket a summons um because obviously he's he you're not supposed to fly 
aircraft um, in in, mm. in, in Manhattan, TFR, isn't it? Full, full stop. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's interesting actually because that part of Manhattan there isn't actually a TFR, but there is an ordinance that stops you taking off basically and landing. So because it, wasn't it? It was the Port Authority police. Yes, that's what I didn't understand because I didn't think they covered the squares around World Trade. That was MIPD because the Port Authority usually literally the porty bits at the edges. I, I, yeah, mm. I, I believe maybe it's because there was World a pond. Tra- I believe <laughs> I believe World Trade Center is actually covered by the the Port Authority, um, and the um, uh, NYPD also attended, as did the FBI, and they were all um, um, uh, questioning him for as, as he was saying for four hours now. There's there's an aspect to it where uh, which I expressed during my live stream, which I think is that there was a there was a certain amount of balance with this. Obviously, we don't know what's actually going on behind the scenes. We don't know what else they're gonna you know they they could be raiding his house right now. Um, but the, there's there's an aspect of it. I think that okay, it was an air to s. It, 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 it wasn't a deliberate thing you know no one's hurt there's, there's technically there is there's property damage of course and a cost there but to me i i think that perhaps there was a measured punishment here and with the ticket and the summons etc because again that is a misdemeanor that 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 that, that yeah that I, 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 up fairly I, serious for him but my point with it from a law enforcement stance and that would be he's still at the scene if it was heavy that was if it was significant question you know this four hours thing i think he was just caught up for four hours at the scene rather than yeah. taking away in question for four hours yeah because i don't think he'd be back at the scene no that's right because um they they would have actually scooped him up and he, he would, yeah he would so be, yeah. and then and then you then you're handed over to fbi then you end up in office block for a long time then it becomes a bit of a jason Bourne type film you know it's it's it you know <laughs> you, you don't get back to the scene of the alleged crime with uh, or you know, sort of thing you know easily so i i think it was more of a you're getting a ticket but Lots of people have to come and talk to you. Yeah. It's we've had that in London with you, know, Buckingham Palace. People flying near Buckingham Palace, things like that, when they really shouldn't. It's not just the normal cops that come and deal with you. No, they are right. higher levels that come, and you know if it takes the FBI thirty minutes to get there, because if you're there, it's not a blue light emergency because they know you're detained, so they're not rushing. So mm-hmm. you know, it, it, I think it's just the four hours thing is just how long it took to deal from start to end. Yes, rather exactly. than I was interviewed heavily and oh, four hours. Yeah, no, indeed. Yeah, pulled pulled over the coals and that type of thing. And he he was even posting on Instagram, sort of uh, with his phone, pictures of the back of the counter terrorism police with their counter terror signs on and that type of thing. So I, I found that quite interesting as well. Uh, so James Lakeman was saying, so basically he wasn't flying it manually and thought, yeah, there's enough room to do a circle. <laughs> um, and uh, Ellis Mean was saying top panel down, etc., costing millions to take off to get the drone. Yeah, I, I, I think I think they'll have contingencies in place for that type of thing. But um, because obviously it, well, seven, seven World Trade is one of the new buildings, isn't it? Of course. And and I, I'm also grateful that the mainstream media didn't blow this up because, of course, it is a sensitive situation. It is a sensitive area um, historically. Um, you wouldn't want to blow a lipo up. Um, yeah, no, no, exactly. And um, you know, it, it, I, I've experienced two buildings being crashed. At, not by us, but I'm experienced with the building side of two buildings. Yeah, one uh, Dallas Cowboys Stadium in America crashed on the roof after a bad flight, uh, and basically we had to wait until there was another access trip up to get it back. The Armadillo in Glasgow, um, the exhibition center, one a Mavic uh, Pro crashed into that. Wow. Um, and um, my friend was head of security and basically had to wait until the next cleaning run where they had access train people going up it yeah. to go and get it and it was brought back down and mm-hmm. um, probably enough, <laughs> they didn't give it to the police they gave it back to the person I I wouldn't have done that I would have given it to the police because at least they had ticking off but they just gave it back to the person who said oh, by the way my drone landed in your roof that's crazy. <laughs> and the Ar- <laughs> armadillo is like a, it's, there's no flat bit. It's, it's it's, it didn't though. auto land. It, oh. it flew into it. I mean, yeah, I, I, we, yeah. we, we, we don't know. We obviously don't know what, what, what happened in that situation, but it would be interesting to know if the guy had his trust certificate. Um, similar, similarly to the UK video that we played out now a couple of weeks ago. And um, we didn't see a, a, an obvious checking of whether there was an operator ID on that drone and that type of thing. So it's going to be interesting moving forward how these things play out and, and the sort of interactions that are but obviously as a hobbyist i'm delighted that this wasn't blown out of all proportion in the media especially with its location and the sensitivity the very serious sensitivity of the location um and i'm i'm you know from a hobby perspective pleased that the punishment wasn't blown out of all proportion but of course i don't want people like that 
uh, who are not going to fly responsibly uh, in in the hobby. I want these people to get educated, frankly. Um, and I think it was actually one of our regulars that, that commented on my on, on the live stream, which I held earlier in the week on this, um, at, on, when they watched the replay. Uh, I can't remember who it was, though, unfortunately. It was one of my regulars uh, who did say this is why they, they want... I think it was Johnny DRC or, or Johnny Mac 26, one of, one of the Johnnies. And... Um, he commented that this is why regulation doesn't necessarily always work and education is is so key uh which i'm, I'm a, obviously i run a channel with lots of educational videos about drone laws etc so it, it's it's something that i believe in passionately um so yeah so it, it's an interesting story it's an interesting one um but I, what I but what i do find interesting is just how cool he was he didn't really seem too bothered i think to, to be honest with you one of the reasons why i haven't in the live stream and or in tonight i haven't shared any of his social accounts is that i i think it's bounced it's bounced his social accounts almost instantly in those four hours that he was there mm. Um, mm -hmm. And what, the reason I didn't share those things is because I don't want to give people the idea that oh, this is a good, great way to get lots of you know it was it was on this drone channel and that drone channel and they shared all his yeah. links out and you know he had all these extra did he get, followers. Had, did he get the did he get the footage off the drone? Um, I don't know. I think it would, it would perhaps be cached, but because um, obviously he's yeah. not, he's not, he hasn't got access to the drone itself, so interesting. He should um, have log files. He should, he should have it, log it, files. It, if he does, it'll be it'll be sold to Storyful by now. Yes. <laughs> it'll be, that's, that's it'll, how it'll to be pay floating out there on TikTok. How to and... pay your fines and FAA fines is a story full of the footage. Indeed. Okay, so we, we're going we're to have a an interesting discussion next on sort of like the evolution of, 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 of a couple of news stories. And of course, this is one which I think most people will expect us to talk about at some point, um, which is... Uh, a, a new story in the in in, in Wired who who um, have gone and uh, gained a a scoop as it were and spoken to um, quite a few of the um, employees at Amazon Prime Air in the UK uh, where well over a hundred employees have either had their uh, have either lost their jobs or are moving to other projects. Now, it's interesting because there's a lot of um i mean people who are losing their jobs and etc obviously aren't going to be happy but there is a lot of malice towards it and it, it it sounds like this project um has well and truly lost its way frankly and obviously amazon have decided to to cut to cut their ties and go um interestingly um one of the one of the uk papers um uh, the, the the daily mail uh, actually managed to get these drone photos um from splash news uh, showing mm -hmm. the actual field, um, the, 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 w w which is basically where the testing was supposed to be happening, etc., um, and showing it sort of essentially looking abandoned as far as you know vehicles in the car park and everything else like that. I mean, this could be a Sunday afternoon for all we know. But uh, um, I thought this was interesting. Little... Well, you, you're not going to abandon it if you've got things flying because that would potentially be illegal. Yeah, so, I mean, they. I don't think those things are flying, though, are they? I think they're hanging somehow on the cable. There's only one cable. Yeah, I did. Well, isn't this cable here one and then one there's, 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 there's there? Like, there's a, there looks like there's a. looks like there's a tether and a safety chain. Yeah, hmm. but I think they might be holding it up, and I think that's sort of like whether they then when they are actually. I mean, it looks like the motors are moving as well. Actually, it's strange, isn't it? Um, but yes, but apparently this was obviously supposed to be tested um, a long time ago um, from the point of view of having those very short hops where you where you put the QR code in your garden and have deliveries and the UK was going to be the, you know, the 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 cutting edge, the lead for this, basically. Um, and it looks like... <laughs> Isn't it, sorry, sc sorry, scroll up a bit. Sorry to interrupt. No, is that sorry. the... Is that, no, 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 down a bit, down a bit, down a bit. Is that is that caravan the control center? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be a neighboring property. What do you reckon? Um, <laughs> but obviously, some interesting like they've got scenario areas to test and that type of thing. I mean, I, I, I would agree it's not necessarily something that I think would be what you would expect. Um, this is one of the videos actually of of one of the more recent um, um, designs which was shown at the Mars conference. Um, of, of how Amazon were doing in terms of mm. um, of, of of their of their drones, so <clears throat> I, I don't think this is necessarily something which is going to be completely dead for Amazon. Uh, my personal opinion is that what we'll probably see is this going out into the market innovation from the point of view that they will now look to have other companies innovate and essentially 
you know one or two of of the first sort of really successful companies you know someone like i suppose like a manor or someone like that who really does nail it down on how to do these things um actually um uh, will will essentially get bought out very very quickly so I, I do i do wonder if that will happen here yeah but i think that you know how 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 the public would be perceiving drone deliveries is that you would have drones flying over and, and dropping parcels or dropping yes. pizzas and all the rest of it. And this is just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, you know, we we don't have the mapping infrastructure yet here for that. We, you know, we still have got, you know, you, you know, there's trees, you know, you have cables that are running over, you know, you know, you, you know, you have tram lines and stuff like that. There are so many obstacles. I think in photo. rural areas. Would you trust this rate. man to deliver your parcel? <laughs> <laughs> rural. I mean, I mean, I mean, I think rural areas. I think that the you know things like pharmacy, uh, you know, you know things like things like medical supplies. That is probably where drones will be used for drone deliveries. But in terms of let's say parcel deliveries and such as this, it's it's. You know, not for quite some time, not for quite a long time. You know. From from, um, from our perspective, we sort of sort of not not an insider scoop or anything, but um, uh, a lot of Amazon pilots have been applying to work for us. Yes, a lot, um, a lot, lot, and it seemed like we we thought it was like quite odd that about the most recent jobs we advertised uh, over fifty percent were Amazon pilots applying, and there was a lot of applicants. Um, and very a lot of them didn't match up with the sort of experience because if you're yes. in a if you're in a beef loss, which is essentially what it is, pro- program like that, it doesn't match up to the skills that we needed for what these jobs were. It's um, it's, it's, it's interesting. Beef loss is still a very small market, and it no is. matter what some training companies tell you about, oh, come and do a beef loss course, it's where it's at. It's still a small market. You have to go where the market work is. Rather than you know, um, you it's, it's, you it's, it's not everywhere. So no. yeah, I, I think that. I'm not so I, I know a bit more based on what I've been told by the people who worked in that program and some of them are quite senior. Um and I do th- I do think from my opinion of that and from what I've heard, it's going to be um essentially an outsourced service. Yeah, mm. exactly. Which is which is one hundred percent what I was just saying and and what I believe that they they will it's it, essentially I, I, I kind of see it like the the hyperloop, there's the um the, the Elon Musk project um where they've 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 built the hyperloop and now they're saying okay everyone else come along and design cars and the best one is the you know um uh will will win x amount of money and contract i could kind of see amazon going the same way I, from the point of view of of allowing the that? market to, to choose it i don't think we're going to be able to design a, a car I'm, thinking for the hyperloop. A, I'm thinking a, a car pulled by drones car pulled by drones okay you've lost me i'm afraid oh, okay yeah That's just like a te- like an electric car Mm. With a te- pull by tethered drones. Yeah, I mean, it's, mm. it's, how how do you think? I, I don't think this is going to affect anything like remote ID or UTM or well, any think, of that kind of stuff. But you have to remember when this. I remember doing jobs in 2016 and 2017 in Cambridgeshire, where Amazon was thick under well underway, and we were doing mapping for the county council for cycleways and roads, and we sort of had to interact with them and avoid them because they were quite primitive at that stage. And and back when they were more primitive, obviously you wanted to give a wider berth yes. when they're more accurate now. <laughs> so you know, no offense to them or their teams, no, just you yeah. know, it was in 2016 the tech wasn't as good as it is now at all. Um, and across the board, and um, you know that was back in 2016. The Inspire One was the sort of the workhorse of the drone world in that respect, and, and still, you know, the Spire series obviously still is, but they're on the two. Um, so I think that the key thing for me was no one was doing this when Amazon started. We didn't know about Mano. We didn't know about Skyports. Mm. No one was doing it, mm. and I think it, they helped kickstart that part of the market. No doubt about that. And now the markets were worried away on itself and self-fulfilling why mm. do you need to invest r&d into that now when the market's doing it for you no i agree and I jeff agree. bezos wouldn't be one of the richest people in the world and amazon one of the biggest companies without understanding when to step back and let the others take over but see, and that, then that's you yeah just jump back in and buy the right thing yeah but you see that exactly which is 100 percent what i think is going to happen and that, that, that's that's also interesting from the point of view of you know who we're talking about here uh bezos and 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 the amazon giants now they're not necessarily the space people, cowboy they're not necessarily a company that we see much incompetence from which is kind of how this story kind of paints it 
it. I I feel like that if they were taking this particularly seriously in the last couple of years, especially, then it would have moved moved as much forward. I think they got to a point. 2017 ish 2018 ish when they realized what they were doing wasn't going to work but they kept it going as almost like a pr thing essentially i said, I that, I, I said that all i said that from day one that when amazon were doing this it was a pr stunt prove it it was a pr stunt and, that, and, but I, I and think, nothing more the key thing is say you know um say where we were one of the richest people in the world running a big company would we with the regulatory landscape alone where we're we're evolving at the moment. We haven't got into the what we're supposed to be getting into yet with the European wide stuff in terms of class mark drones and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, a remote ID in America is trying to do that. Why would you want to develop something that could be redundant purely from a regulatory action? Why wouldn't you want to wait until because you're not going to be doing widespread deliveries until this stuff comes in? Yes, exactly. Because it, UTM needs to exist for you really to do it properly. Yes. yes. So why? Make something that may be redundant now or sit back and let that regulatory stuff settle. Let the dust That's settle right. and That's go right. and then pick up that and say, right, we use that to do that. Yes. I mean, you know, it's, it's without Amazon getting involved, we would never, I mean, the, I'm, the two I remember, I think the first ones was DHL and Amazon. Yeah. DHL and yeah. Amazon were definitely the first. Yeah. So, mm. you know, they've spurred it on, but regulatory areas need to enable it now. We, we, you cannot. Do drone, you could not start drone deliveries tomorrow under the current structure. Oh, of course not. No, any you know, anything that is going on is basically research. Yes, just before it's it gets away from us, um, El Smeghead, thank you very much for doing the highlighted thing. I did get a notification that my members can now make highlighted messages, which shows how long they've been a member for and that type of thing. He says, am I the longest serving member yet? Sausages. And what I like about that is it kind of looks like the super chat, but it, it's just a, basically a, a membership thing. And of course, my lovely members are contributing um, every single month. So it's far more important, frankly, than than, than a, a super chat, although super chats are wonderful people. Thank you. Um, uh, how how did you set that off? Because Mike Drennan's just done one as well, and uh, yeah, Mike Mike Drennan. Unfortunately, yes, Andy's asking is 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 he the longest serving member yet? Unfortunately, not. Uh, Mike Drennan does have you beat there by uh, by two months, two whole months, and I think that one's actually about to go across to sixteen months as well. As he says, sorry, Andy, got you beat. But I'd be interested to know how that is. That an option as a member? Could you let the other members know, please? Um, okay, next up, we're going to go in the opposite direction in a news story now from something that started off big and sort of tailed off and is now fizzled out, essentially. Um, I'm going to talk about in the opposite direction. This is back in 2018 when um, Airbus were talking about... Um, I'm trying to play it on my OBS screen. Um <clears throat> When, when they were talking about advanced uh, drone inspections and the fact that they wanted to move towards a situation where um, they would be able to inspect their aircraft, basically, uh, to do a, and obviously, you know, a much quicker um, um, inspection than, than, than having to send someone up there. And of course, you've got the, the AI doing it and that type of thing, which is very interesting. Um, now, this, this, again, was obviously three nearly four years ago uh from from their original press releases and you know it, it's a good idea isn't it it's it's it is a it's a it's it's something i think that 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 could go somewhere now rather than fizzling out and again sort of ending like the amazon uh, prime air has so far um of course it's actually gone in the other direction where um a, a complete airbus has now been inspected in a faster and and, and safer than than a physical control um, as you can see from this story from ed.nl, um, uh, this is interesting, I isn't mean, it? Because this 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 only took three hours for every stain, dent, or tear uh, to be detected on this uh, aircraft. I will. I, my, I'm okay. KLM obviously want to claim it's them, but EasyJet were already doing this in the UK. This has been done. This this, this has been done for about three years so far. Yeah, but like, I, I, you know, yeah. No, it's not Europe. Well, <laughs> it may, no, no. In the open air, to be fair, it may be because yeah, this is what we're doing that's a good hangers. Point. Yeah, because because mm -hmm. previously it was like this situation. Wasn't I know, it? I know. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's said we're doing a looting hangar. So maybe it is the first open air one. I, yeah. I, I doubt that because like a lot of airports have drones and stuff going a lot of the time anyway. But are you suggesting? I mean, are you suggesting that the public relations department of a um, a major corporation would would want to try and claim a first when they're not necessarily the first. Well, I, I'd be surprised if it wasn't Lufthansa claiming it in the first place, given they also were Airbus. I, so, think, you know, I think it was Lufthansa who were doing it. Yeah, first. I think Lufthansa do most things first. In yes. that respect, <laughs> first for the A380, they were first for the seven 
747 800 they were first to kill off some of those 747s you know it's that's right Lufthansa really do, do love being and they like then they buy air but you know, they're basically the same owners as airbus and things and so they get things first so yeah i would i'd be surprised if Lufthansa weren't already doing this klm are a bit of a catch-up uh mm-hmm. usually but um it's it's great i mean i'm <laughs> that's not normally wearing like you know obviously it's flying air side is not easy. We've done it at Heathrow and things. It's not as easy to do as you Can't know. Wait. It's it's as hard as you um it's as hard as you think it is. Um so regular use the people I feel sorry for if there's regular outdoor use of airfields is air traffic control because they have to deal with every single one and it's it's that's a big burden actually. You'll end up at a bit you could if 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 BA at Heathrow, for example, decided to do this for all their, you know, at the bottom of the airfield. First of all, they're really close to the flight path there. So it's a, it is a genuine problem. I would say more tethered drones could be more useful where there's a guarantee it can't go too high. Um, but air traffic controller, are, are they going to end up having to put someone on a drone desk just to deal with drones at the airport internally within the fence? I, I do feel sorry for them because, you know, they, they have to enable it and, and, and stuff like that. But it is sort of, distracting and obviously the, the the ones with people in them are a little bit more important no matter what anyone says okay so um just just a, a very quick piece of how uh, housekeeping members um else make is telling me that when you click on the the super chat button it gives you an extra option to basically have your your membership uh highlighted i really like that idea because it, again it's giving them an opportunity i've always felt that it's quite harsh that the super chats get highlighted in the chat but my awesome members although they've got the little icons after their name depending on how long they've been a member um it's um yeah it's it's it, it's nice that that's a way of doing it so let's have some of the uh the members get, get, getting the most out of their money and putting some highlighted uh, uh comments in there uh we'll certainly respond to those ones um uh, uh the quickest because obviously they they come up like super chats which is really really cool um so yeah so it, it's but again it's interesting because of course that that is something that, that's almost the opposite from the other story and it, it is it is a a a part of the drone industry which is going that way because of course they're being used more and more for inspections etc and and it's and it's it's good to see it happening frankly it's 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 a it's, so it's great use of the tech the thing i would love to see happening with this is um anti-icing inspections mm. with thermal because so this is a sort of tedious story, but at Belfast City Airport, oh they please, once, please tell us a tedious story on a live stream. Yeah, they they once ran out of um, the icer fluid. Oh, and my dad worked for the government at the time. He was flying back to London, and the pilot had to go out with a brush and brush the ice off the wings of the British Airways A320 oh. because they ran out of fluid. And it's just like. You feel like with a Sky Dio thermal, for example, that was able to go and look for ice buildup yeah. just to mm-hmm. verify. Yeah. It could be done while the de is going. It could give a live feedback to the de-icer. The de-icer can maybe become a bit more automated because obviously they don't like putting people up in the baskets. It just feels there's a natural ecosystem here where it's airports this would be. As, and if you look at America, like their de-icer pads are on the way to the runway quite far out. So you could have a segregated box there, a geofence box mm-hmm. to say, right, the drone can fly in this area. It doesn't need air traffic mm-hmm. control permission because you know, it's safe if it's in that box. So I just feel there's a natural ecosystem for their use. And who, you know, is, I, I could see I could see us sitting out in a plane, looking out the window and see a drone and not pay it wouldn't cause us any alarm because it was checking for ice or whatever. Who would who would de ice the drone? I mean, you could just put <laughs> heated blades in it. Controversial. <laughs> uh, okay, we're gonna move on to our next one. Was it story. was it a de icing drone at Gatwick gone wrong? Is, is is there an air, was there is there an airport at Gatwick? I, 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 I don't know. I've not, not really heard anything about that news story. Perhaps we'll perhaps we'll cover that next week. Um, Here they got lots of de icing delays. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, um, the, the the next news story is is kind of coming around from a New York Times article, uh, which is basically talking about the the what what this particular reporter feels is the tightest even tighter squeeze that the Chinese uh, government is putting on large uh, companies within um to to essentially surrender to the government and obviously you know th- there are a couple of laws uh, in china which which dictate that um as an individual you're not allowed to um uh, refuse to um uh, spy on behalf of the government and that large companies have to open their books to the secret service um security services as well so you know there th- th- there is there is some issue there from that point of view and it looks like it's getting worse now the reason i'm bringing this particular new story up obviously um in with regards to uh, uh drones and tech 
is of course a lot of our drones and tech comes from china um and of course there is that that one very large company in in our um in a, in in our drone niche dji uh, which is already under a lot of scrutiny in the states from the point of view of you know uh, data protection spying and you know which, whichever whichever way they're attacking them this week basically and um uh, my sort of viewpoint on this my my concern on this is that at what point to DJI not not turn their back on drones because obviously they're focusing very much on the consumer end of the of the market, but without that big payday of the enterprise drones going out to the federal agencies and all these you know government agencies and everything else like that, which is a which was always a very big payday for them. And you know, I'm 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 aware that an Inspire three was 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 pretty much ready to go at one point, uh, which was then shelved. But so it, it's it's. It's it's interesting to me how the continued issue and and how the continued perception, because um, obviously I don't live there, of of what's happening with the Chinese government towards big business is going to impact the drone hobby uh, with things like the entity list, etc. And and whether or not we're going to get tighter and tighter controls on on Chinese companies in the states, which of course then because that's such a huge drone market is then going to affect the rest of the the drone hobby and 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 commercial sector as well how how long do you guys think dji can withstand being outside of the enterprise market in in the states and continue with their current type of business model well i think from a financial point of view do, you know you know dji don't have to worry for quite some time because they they are miles ahead than the rest i mean you just look at the recent figures or you look at you know the sort of distance between sky deal hotel and 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 all the rest of it they are very far ahead and as long as they keep producing at the end of the day it's always about the money it's always about the money it's always about how much they can be they can be, they can be uh, are they worried about the enterprise i don't think so because i think they have enough enterprise what was interesting i noticed this week if we just kind of talk about what's been happening this week over over Boca Chica and, 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 and you know you know and we see big heavy being being put into place it was being inspected as it was coming as it was coming up as it was being lifted it was being inspected by an hotel drone yes absolutely but again you know Very cool. I, I don't think you can disregard the the enterprise side of things and how much of a hole that does create in the finances because uh, mm -hmm. it, it is it is a huge part of their of 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 of, of their business model uh, because they had all of the sectors and suddenly they're now having to focus on the consumer side of things hence hence why we're now seeing DJI sort of going out in DJI hokey cookie either in out in out shake it all about because there's that many articles out at least every month saying oh it's all fixed now oh it's back again oh, it's all fixed it's back again so you know it's going to be like that because it's essentially two sort of verbally warring countries it's, they're never going to line up fully so we're not going to get it's never i think dji are probably under the pressure this is just never going to go away it'll just it'll just be there that's right it's one mm. it's like you're having to live with it you're mm. having to you know cope with it and remember, the key the key thing in their favor is they're not pushed into the market. They're being pulled in by the users inside the market. So it's not that big a deal, I don't think, for DJI because they know the users themselves want them in. And I imagine they're not having to spend as much on lobbying as others are because mm. there's so much federal government who want to use DJI products. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we 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 see the reports every 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 month, frankly, from from you know one emergency service or another saying actually these drones, you know, all they really care about is the fact that they're saving lives, yeah. um, right. and you know they they want to use what is actually going to do that. And, and most of those law enforcement agencies and generally government are neutral, and yes, they'd rather have something that fits their sort of national security model and things yes. like that. But if it doesn't exist, they're not going to say right. This is you know, no. That's right. Mm, exactly. I'll swear because you'll get demonetized, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, th thank you to Ernest Mean for popping the Discord link in the uh, the chat there. Um, yes, we we the, the Discord channel is starting to evolve quite nicely. There's a nice little group of us in there who who chat pretty much daily about different sides of drones, including a guy that's going to different locations and just dancing in one spot with the drone going round and round him, which is a, a very interesting TikTok account. But again, you know, it's. <laughs> it's good to see I didn't, know you had, I, did, I didn't know you had TikTok, Sean. 
Oh no, I, I I watch a bit of TikTok, but in actual fact, it's Airless Mean that actually shares most of the okay. the uh, the TikToks. But we have everything in there. We've got FPV channels, um, and um, um, we've even got a rant channel where you can come in and just rant about things that are annoying you. It doesn't even necessarily be about drones and tech. Is we that sponsored by the Micro Drone Four Point Yeah, we have a um, a YouTube channel as well where you can ask questions about uh, YouTube creation, etc. All sorts of different channels in there, which is which is cool and a really great little group there. So, um, and we're also we're we're actually giving away um, uh, at the moment an A to C of C um, from Drone Masterclass. Um, and it's basically in our giveaway section on the Discord channel. All you've got to go in there is put a tada, which is the little um, uh, sort of cone thing with the with the popper stuff coming out the top. Accurate description, Sean. Um, it's, it's almost as if I'm a writer. Um, and um, all you've got to do is put that emoji on there and you automatically get entered and you get a little, the bot, the giveaway bot actually sends you a message to confirm that you've been entered. And then in 28 days now, I think it is left on it, um, it will automatically pick a winner and notify hmm. them, which is very exciting. And that's obviously a UK uh, one. And I'm very happy to say tonight that I can confirm that tomorrow um, we're going to be launching our um, um, US side of that, which is Remote Pilot 101, um, who uh, uh, are, are coming together with us to offer um, a, a course, uh, which obviously is, is one of the sign up things there where you're a member for life, essentially. So you'll be able to take your part 107 and all of your recurrence, and it's not going to cost you a penny. So that, that one's launching tomorrow on the Discord server. There'll also be details of it in the community tab as well. So keep an eye out for that. Um, so that's for anyone watching the replay, that's Saturday. So if you're watching this on the news clipping on Sunday, uh, uh, Get into I Discord. Would, it could, the contest is already there. I would just like to say that oh, it's it's not Saturday yet, but it's Saturday in three minutes' time. So does that mean that I can? No, because I haven't put the link up yet. It's it's not it's not like I didn't say midnight, did I? I said tomorrow. All right. Yeah. Get back in your box, Stephen. Literally. Yes. Yeah, stick Saturday to the and Sean. And, stick to the writing, not the voiceovers. And and there you go. Look, he's he's now frozen. Yeah. Stephen, come he, back to us. He, he looks really, he looks really interested there, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks fascinated. Yeah. Uh, are you still with us verbally, Stephen? He's, oh, really good he's back. Oh, he's oh, back. Oh, hey. oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I, I think he was just doing a really good. Yeah. <laughs> Freeze frame. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so that's 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 the news chat for this evening, and this is something which um, uh, we're going to repeat um, on our on our uh, our regular show when we have time to do it. Um, so next, we're going to move on to our our main topic, um, which is actually five tips to find places to fly your drone. Um, now, first of all, when we're talking about this particular subject, uh, uh, some some basic housekeeping. All of the tips I'm going to give are assuming that your flight is legal, safe, and insured if required. So please bear that in mind so that, you know, I'm not saying go and do these things and don't check the airspace and eh, just, just do it. Um, I'm, I'm saying, you know, uh, the checklist is there. I, I certainly go on about the drone rules enough and I've done enough videos about them. Uh, there's a wonderful UK drone rules playlist in the description below. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm that, so just basic housekeeping, I'm assuming that those things are, are happening. Now, my, my first tip would actually be to join and interact with social media and Discord channels, etc. Why not ours? We actually have a find places to fly um, US and UK list where people are popping um, um, uh, uh, locations in there which is interesting one of our very active members actually a chap called tony fly sky drones who was our first uk drone expert um uh mod in, in our discord channel um because he, he he flies his 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 drones more than most people i know frankly um he's always out there flying and he's always getting his photos on the bbc and picked up by different uh, news agencies etc it's awesome uh, he's a really great advert for the hobby and he's always sharing things like tonight he shared the fact that there was a ship leaving portsmouth uh, with a couple of locations where he flies from normally where where that happens and, and some photos of um, gun wharf keys and again all done perfectly legally but some stunning stunning shots with the right kind of um, uh, research so talk to members and ask people for spots look at flights that other people are posting and, and ask them about the location etc perhaps talk to them about where they took off from that sort of thing you tend very quickly to get an impression of whether somebody wants to have a chat about that kind of thing um mm -hmm. Uh, Stephen just trying to brush over the fact that his phone went off there. Hmm. Yes, yes, I, I agree, Sean. Yes. On the Discord my... channel. Oh, you're <laughs> 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 Yeah, 
<laughs> That's awesome. He was really hoping he was frozen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was really hoping. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. 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 That that wasn't my phone. <laughs> so that so that that would that would certainly be um um something I would say. One thing I do is I actually look at, on social media and in the news for stories that are happening at interesting locations. And and mm. I've actually found places to fly on documentaries and that type of thing when I'm watching. And I, I will then contact the owner um, and um, and have a chat with them. I mean, for instance, um, I recently flew my, 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 my DJI Mini 2 to capture a piece of Banksy art, which was on a wall. Uh, fairly close to it, uh, 40 minutes away from where I live, uh, because it was actually starting to get vandalized, unfortunately. And I wanted to get down there and, because uh, I am a Banksy fan, I wanted to get down there and take some pictures of it and get sort of the aerial view, which was, which actually does look very, very cool. Um, so again, I've taken that from the news story that it was being vandalized, etc. And I thought, oh, okay, check the airspace. I've checked that it's safe to do it and that type of thing. Um, and I've, I've gone down it. So that's another way that that, that, that that for me would certainly be tip two. My third tip, Sorry, you're about to say something about my tip. No, I was just going to ask: Are you Banksy? No, Nobody knows. So. No, I'm not. I'm not Banksy. I am happy to confirm, I am not Banksy. If you saw me draw, I'm... although technically he does spray, he he kind of creates them first and then sprays them, doesn't he? They're templates. I find I find about Enigma because as a segue, I was working at Vegas last year just for full lockdown, mm. and there was a Banksy store in the mall. Mm. Uh, what? what? A there's a there's a yeah. is, there's a Banksy theme park, isn't there? Well, no, that was uh, what was the what's the phrase? It was um, like a dystopia, a pop up, a pop -up thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't really a fun park. It was more of a tragic thing. Yeah, but still, there but, was a you know. Yeah, but this is like this is like a proper I, like my this favorite is a proper like merchandise store. Yeah, my my favorite piece of Banksy art was when one of the uh, pieces of art sold at auction, and then there was a shredder. Shredded building and it shredded but it didn't shred quite all of it so it, it, it actually went up in value uh because it's because it's still hanging there out at the bottom of the frame which i think is just genius yes, frankly on so you many aren't. so many levels I, I loved that story and especially the way that the the auction winner responded to it as well so okay my, my third tip would be to open up drone assist or drone safety map.com the excellent tool from altitude angel which um I'm, I'm aware that altitude angel are actually in the background now that they've taken control of the app again they're in the background actually making some advances and improving it so we should have some news on that quite soon which is very exciting but go into the drone assist app or, or drone safety map Dot com and have a look around in your area at, at, at locations which which don't have um, flight restriction zones etc um, and again if you zoom in on, on the drone assist app it'll also show you issues on the ground um, and then cross cross correlate that with google maps and again have a look at the sort of interesting areas that you can find which aren't too much of a drive away from you um, in terms of being able to find some some interesting locations from that point of view which is uh, which is pretty pretty cool D, D aerial view says tips up everyone yes thank you um so yes and um my next tip tip number four already uh, is is approach owners and management of existing locations and ask permission to fly there and arrange it during a time which uh, there's limited uh, to no public interact or, or very little public interaction and remember the whole thing about involved and uninvolved people um, a couple of examples i can give you there is a um a monastery that i flew at at the center of one of europe's largest um uh, cemeteries I had the permission of of the the head monk Mm. That doesn't sound right, does it? Head monk? But anyway, the, the most senior monk. Um, and um, they let everybody know that was on the property. And I came down, I think it was about five o'clock in the morning, uh, flew a couple of times and got some really nice shots. Actually, there is a there's a video on on the channel if you if you go back far enough uh, or look at the playlist of, of my flights and you can see it there. Um, and again, you know, those people were all involved. Those people were all told what to happen if something happened with the drone and, and what I would shout, that type of thing. Uh, so it was all nice and safe. And it, it was a really interesting place to fly. I enjoyed interacting with those people as well. And another one which shows the, the lengths you can go to to try and get people involved and to make sure people are aware of what's going on is what is now an industrial estate, which is actually the former RAF Barnum. Uh, which is a formula, a formula, a former nuclear weapon storage site, 
um, with all the little kiosks where the 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 fissile cores were put down etc and that type of thing um and the owner has actually kept it exactly how it used to look you're not allowed to put the industrial units aren't allowed to put signs up and that type of thing and so it still looks very much like the base and the the owner there very kindly um notified and actually wrote to all of the um uh the uh, the industrial unit um, uh, companies and and told them the days, the times, and and that type of thing, and 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 how I would be going through the park to make the filming, size of drone, that sort of thing, my mobile number if 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 they have any issues, etc. Uh, so again, that, that that's another tip. Permission flying can be a lot of fun, and I've actually met a lot of very interesting people along the way. Um, I've, I've 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 I did a Buddhist temple. Um, there's there's all sorts of little different a, a, a mosque, which was actually the first. Uh, mosque in Europe um, fantastic fantastic people there that, that were very very open to me coming down and doing that so as I say it isn't just about the drone hobby from that point of view I've actually met some really really interesting people along the way as well so permission flying is always one which is very very cool and um, had, go on we had a Buddhist monk recently flying illegally in a, in a rat really from a Buddhist temple wow he's in like the middle of a house in there and you're like there's a Buddhist and there's like probably big gold thing where you look at Google Earth and yeah. Was it in the south of England? Uh, it was in, yes, it was south of Manchester. Okay, no, that's that's not the south of England. No, I'm just saying I can't say where it is. But no, it was no, south I know of that. Manchester. I know that, but you know, I I, I mean south, south. But yes. Anyway, um, it was yeah. I mean, it was north from you. Okay, yeah, no, this, this was in my area. But I'm See, about. when you asked the, the, the monks mm. for the permission, was his name Chip? No. Oh. What, a chipmunk. <laughs> yeah, no. There you go, people. You've had me singing at the start, tech tech faults, and how, if now they've comedy. Got a, if they've got a vow of silence, how do you get their permission for being involved? Don't have a vow of silence. No, the, some monks do. Yeah, yeah, but but not monks that are on. I suppose they could nod. That they're on international uh, missions to to the UK yeah. to spread I think, to spread yeah. the awesome uh, benefits and value of meditation. I don't think they're going to. That, send that them sounds that a lot on. like you've you've got confused there with the plot of the Book of Mormon. Save me, Stephen. <laughs> I was just going to say I think you're confused with movies from the seventies where ah oh. where where you know monks didn't speak and stuff yes I mean, it, it does happen it's, but they don't the... tend to they don't tend to say okay um johnny could you go to england and uh work at the uh, the buddhist temple in surrey and uh, actually yeah uh, sam you're in your vow of silence it's perfect timing for you to go but there we go but you know i mean aren't they silent monks at the buckfast abbey where they make buckfast tonic wine down devon yes but they're they're and, not you know... they're not transient where, whereas the Buddhists from uh, are, are on a, on a mission, so, so I mean, yes. you can travel and welcome, not talk to people. Welcome to the monk debate hour on Geeks. You can you, you can travel and not speak to people, so it's a valid question. You can travel point. and not speak to people, but how do you teach meditation, which is which is this particular temple's you, main? You know, I mean, me meditation is usually quite good without speaking. So you know, not teaching it, not teaching it. It's like drone flying is quite quite good without just, speaking, just, but just but your courses them. have got quite a lot of talking in them, haven't they? So yeah, yeah. I would say they they produce a meditative like state when yes. you've done our courses. Well, yeah, I mean, dr driving a car is technically meditating. Driving a car on the same road that you drive every day is technically meditating. So okay, and my fifth tip before we get too much off on 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 that particular we, we can go down a rabbit hole or two in 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 a in in a few moments don't worry but my fifth tip is actually be prepared have your drone with you um, so that when you go out for other reasons um, i often have my air 2s and my mini 2 with me so that i'm able to make impromptu flights if i'm driving somewhere and it's oh look at that location i'm gonna i'm gonna stop and you know check everything again all the housekeeping rules make sure it's legal safe and insured um but yeah and i i often get some quite good flights from that point of view and have have a lot of fun from the point of view of making flights that i didn't really realize i was going to have on a you know between meetings and that type of thing if if you happen to to travel out etc so I'm be always prepared packing. i'm always, I'm always packing. packing yeah yeah, it's 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 something that I've I've been doing for quite a while now, especially the Mini Two. I mean, you just don't need and the and to be fair, the Air Two S's. I've got mine in a in a tiny little case, title. I I can just say that I don't have a vow of silence, but I have a vow of flying. 
oh man the dad jokes and the comedy just don't get don't get much better do we okay he's doing a really good blufeld impression today here he is he is isn't he he's really moving into his microphone is this is this to make up for the god-awful audio that you had on on thursday night live with ken heron oh yeah well well that's what happens when you use skype but you see, if, if if you were paying attention to the chat, we were all telling you in the chat that your AirPods were working as the microphone, not your actual microphone. Uh, I was. So, uh, I, I. We tried. I, well, we tried I, to save you. We tried to I save just, you. I just. I just woken up, so you know, um, yeah. I was too busy concentrating. <laughs> I mean, okay. the phone is really big in his hands the whole, when he holds it to be able to, you know. That's a good point. Read it while during the point. stream, like like the whole chat going up like that on the on that huge yeah. fourteen inch monitor that's in front of him. That's like you I know, know, yeah. Because in, in for, a, for him, in all his facts, iPhone is like us holding a menu. Yeah, for for anyone that's thinking that that behind Stephen there is is a large piece of wall art, that's actually a black light switch. Um, for, it's, it's, to normal it's, scale, it's the black insert of a plug socket. <laughs> that's it. Oh man! Okay, as um, this 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 um, um, unfortunate picking on Stephen for being short, which in fact he's he's pretty much bang on the same height as me, frankly, um, is because we um, we had some fun trying to work uh. out which of the three amigos we would all be, and uh, we were trying to work it out on height as well, and uh, we, it, it turned out surprisingly, I think Stephen looks like a strapping uh, Scottish lad, but it turns out he's quite short. But there we go. I'm I'm totally Chevy Jays, but I'm but unfortunately no, I'm Martin you're, Short. You're Martin Short Short. <laughs> but just very quickly, I want to say hi to a few people in the chat as well before we move on to our second topic, uh, which of course is talking about legacy drones and A2C of Cs and things, which is very exciting. Um, hi to Fish Diaries, D and D Aerial Views, good to see you. Lindsay Hayes, great to see you. I hope you're well, one of our regulars. Uh, Legwork Bill, I hope you're well, sir. One of our regulars there as well. Crypto Man five thousand, um, Audi S four B seven. Now the S four B seven is that the which which kind of year is the B seven? Remind me because I, I I love Audi S fours. Well, I used to love Audi S fours um, when they when they were proper cars. But there we go. And um, yeah, so thank you very much to James Lakeman. Hi, drone shots. Good to see you, Jody. Hope you're well. Stevie, Capture Life Connection, uh, Johnny DRC, and Sam Sam and Rose. Sam Burns. Hi, good to see. You. Yes, better late than never. Absolutely. But, but frankly, you know, be be on time next time. Okay. Um, and interactive DNA. It's great, great to see you as well. Hope you hope you're very very well. Um, we're enjoying a, a, a bit of a, a different evening this evening for our for our live stream for a few different reasons. Uh, we will be back to normal on Thursdays from next week because I think I'm going to take a vow of streaming to never stream on a Friday night again because just about everything that went wrong could have gone wrong. Um, and I, and I I, th I think I might have caused some marital discourse uh, along the way as well. But enough said about that. Um, yes. Okay, so our next topic. Now, this is something which I, I hear talked about from the point of view that obviously at the moment in the UK, we have the A2C of C, which is a certificate you can gain through people like dronemasterclass.co.uk. Um, and um, basically that allows you to fly larger drones. At the moment, it's up to two kilograms, but then it goes to four kilograms once they're C labeled. And... Um, so things like the Air 2S, etc. But you have to be within, stay within, stay um, uh, outside of 50 meters of uninvolved people, with all of the complexities of whether they're in a building and all that sort of thing. Whether the building can be um, uh, pe penetrated, penetrated by that drone if it falls. Um, and of course, those legacy drones, which are not sea labelled, up to the uh, two kilogram, can be used in those areas. And there is some people that are wondering what will happen to the A A2C of C once the end of 2022 comes and of course what we're hoping for is that by that point we have some c2 labeled drones so that we can actually fly with the one-to-one -one rule uh, within five meters of uninvolved people which will be very 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 exciting and in congested areas with things like the air 2s with us with a c label so in my opinion very much the a2c of c won't be dead of course they're they they're five years aren't they Yep, 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 they last for five years, so I don't think it will be dead personally. Um, but I, I think the the key now is when the C labels will get announced and formalised, and um, how quickly manufacturers react to that. I think I, I, I do. I, I wonder if you know DJI already already has the C two special edition ready to run, frankly, in in the background somewhere. But I mean, how 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 long do you think it's going to take? Come on, tell us, tell us. Well, the key thing is we're still relatively aligned with Europe in terms of the spec of that. Yes. 
So we're not, if we were by ourselves by a margin, then we're probably back of the queue after mm. everyone else is doing it. Mm. So I think because we're pretty much there with Europe for the most part, because the CEA were so heavily involved with Europe in setting these new standards, I think we're pretty we're not that far away. I think there's something there. I just don't think it's out because they can't announce it until it's finalized in law what the spec is. Yes. But I think I think the, the key component parts that are going to be in there in terms of physical buttons and, and different modes and things and the uh, the jewels and all that sort of stuff. I think that's already done. I think it's just they need the, the, the governments to catch up. And I don't think the UK is the most behind there at all. Excellent. Well, that, that, that's that, that's very good to hear. And of course, we're, we're not talking about, we're not sort of waiting here for DGI to do something. We're not sitting here waiting for necessarily the CAA to do anything because it is a, this is a DFT matter. Would that be right? That, that's a, is, you know, is it... Obviously, it's, it's, the law is always DFT anyway. The CAA yeah. just regulate that. But there are other, I think it's another, as uh, a BVIS or something like that. That's so the... The people who get involved in British standards yes, and things yes. like that, I think they're more involved because innovation, it's going to be a business product, product and, conform, yeah. conformity type thing. So it's it's not a one team effort. I don't I believe. I think it's multiple people involved or multiple agencies involved, because essentially this is a bit sort of a Brexit issue as well in terms of stuff getting stamped coming in, say it's complied with UK rules and and, stuff like that. and pandemic issue as well. Of course, you know there has to be a priority tree for how these things get resolved. But do, do you, in your opinion, and just a personal, just your personal opinion, do you? Do you think sea labels will be in in time for us to see drones released before the end of 2022? No, you don't. So, so you think that that we will get an ex, an, an extension of legacy, or do you think they'll draw the I, line and keep that line? Oh, no, I, I I would be hopeful of we will have awareness and possibly Christmas orientated seals. I just think delivery might be 2023 early quarter one. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, but so, I think I think I think all manufacturers are aiming for Christmas 2022 as the refresh point of sale of advertising. Yes. Oh, you need a new drone, you need a sea label drone, etc. I think Christmas 2022 is what they're all working for, and obviously the retailers work ahead. So you know, um, you know, they film Christmas TV shows in February, they do Christmas TV adverts in July. You know, everyone's working ahead, so I think they are working ahead to 2022 Christmas. No, okay, that, that, that's really interesting. Um, and and one of the sort of side issues, side stories of, of this, which we have covered on Geeks Vana in a video previously, is where DGI, and it was on their enterprise site, came out and said, you know, we're ready to, to retroactively fit labels on drones. And, um, you know, whether or not that that would hit down as far as the smaller consumer drones. Um, your, your Mini 2s, etc. obviously that's irrelevant because sub 250 gram can stay in the A1 airspace indefinitely definitely at the moment um so so that's that's good but but my, my issue is and, and and somebody did ask it in the chat um and i've lost it there. andrew mclean do you think dji will certify existing air to us for a small fee when that happens i i don't think that's necessarily going to be financially viable because of i think there's going to be physical changes on the controller uh which isn't just a case of putting a new sticker yeah. on and that type of thing and there's, there's there's a compliance issue there, definitely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And 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 it's and and also the problem is if you start retroactively, how how do the authorities know? And I'm I'm not agreeing with this or disagreeing with this. I'm just trying to say how I think it will play out. How do the authorities know whether your Air 2S with now now has a, a C2 sticker brought off of eBay stuck on there? How does the average you know um, um, uh, a police officer, whoever whichever authority is dealing with it, how do they know that that's that's an authentic C marking um, unless it's part of the original label that's on the actual drone, which is what I think it will be, won't it? The little C symbols that that, that, that are on yeah, the I mean, drone registration. Yeah, there's already yeah, it's all, it'll be on that serial number sort of pad yes. or yeah. sticker they put on them. Where the thing. UK CA sticker a badge already is so um because, yeah and, and that's the reason they put them all on those labels of course because then there isn't 50 different labels which, which could be put on there afterwards frankly um to show that it's 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 gone through that so it, I, I i don't necessarily think that's going to happen um and i i think in the meantime obviously the mini 2 will continue to be the king of the skies although i have to say and i have said this on previous shows before and i do have a video coming up about this um, that I'm quite surprised at actually how many locations once I take into now the rules have started to settle down now I I, I feel like I've got article 241 in my head properly and therefore flying over buildings that type of thing and you know are those people in those buildings protected are they behind barriers that type of thing you know this foot so the separation of the 50 meters can technically come down should I be aware of anybody being in those buildings etc then 
I, I'm starting to find actually because I love the camera on the Air 2S, I am I am actually able to fly a lot more than I necessarily thought I would be at this stage in congested areas. My, my point, just for final point on the sort of retrospective thing is, why would you assume DJI will pay for a small fee? Do that whenever they they bring out a drone with a two point seven K camera. Well, I, I think whenever the confusion... they, they then bring out a four K one, they're obviously yeah. they want to sell you yeah. a new drone. They're yeah. there. They do not and... want to upgrade you. They want to sell a new drone. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. every and, manufacturer and, does. And by the end of twenty twenty two, going by how often they're refreshing these things, the Air two Air two S were a year apart. Mini one, Mini two were a year apart. Yeah. Where you know the, the, the Mini three should be out with a year after the Mini two chippergeddon pending of course um but um it, it's also an issue of course that uh, and, and and what started this sort of retroactive labeling side of things off apart from the fact that these, these are very expensive drones is the fact that dji themselves did say they would be offering it but i think they're talking more about your um larger scale drones sort of the the mavic 2 pro enterprise and upwards where the investment in the kit it can be returned to your heli guy type dealer and they can actually retroactively label it but, but and then go you can just system. But, but you can just go through a specific category then yeah exactly if you're an enterprise user so this is it becomes defunct issue it does it does mm-hmm. uh, but but i think it, it was that blog post by dji saying they're ready to do it although it was on the enterprise dji enterprise site um but i think it's that post that has created that that hope there so i i don't necessarily think it's going to actually technically be an issue from that point of view although of course there's going to be so many of my drones which are going to be moved into the uh, the legacy uh, side of things which of course means the drone that you know I, i've just bought the air 2s that i've just bought will you know by the end of next year will, will be will be a, a, an a3 uh drone only um of course unless flown under my gvc Many of course <laughs> uh, but yeah um um just to audi s4b7 uh the drone will send your location to c8 no it won't especially the open category c8 don't get involved other than the training that will be the police that sends it to if it does that at all and it'll probably have to be under uk law it'll have to be very regulated about who it can send it to and when yes the police won't just go oh let's look in the sky they will have to have a really good reason to do that and and i i would expect it to be similar um the the electronic um um, um awareness to be fairly similar to the fact that with remote ID in the states, where it's a um, it's 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 transmission rather than necessarily being something which is over a um, over over the, over the telecoms network or anything else like that. So I think it's going to be a local area thing only. Well, yeah, that's remote. not really finally confirmed in that respect in the UK system anyway. Yeah. I'm sure there should be announcements on that soon enough. Um, just to say, um, in terms of uh, oh, what was it said there? That SSD thing, that's that's a really good um, thing for the new drones, actually. No one really talks about that. Mm. But, like, why are we not using more SSD technology in drones? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, actually, because the Hubson Xeno Mini thing, which obviously flew into the curtain, um, so, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not validating that, but that does come rather than... Um, and 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 it's thought perhaps some are saying because the little SD card holder is licensed, so therefore of course you have to you have to pay a licensing fee for that. So they've gone for an internal memory instead. So you can buy the drone with I think it's you know sixteen thirty two sixty four one twenty eight whatever it is different types of of internal memory. That 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 is that is interesting. Although I do like being able to take that 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 um uh, footage directly out of the drone myself, and rather than having to take the drone with me to download it. Well, you see, this, this can we have a grind my gears, Peter Griffin style section, please? The Inspire Two SSD costs. Wow, mm. they've just they've gone up again. Really? No, I'm pretty. Yeah, well, yeah, they've got because they only sell the basically the bigger version now. They don't do the smaller ones because mm. they were, in my opinion, from what I was told by DJI, the Inspire Three new SSD, better camera, blah blah blah, didn't happen. But the SSDs happened. Um, uh, 1500 quid for an SSD now. It's only one available. You used to be able to get nice. one like small 240s, 480s. Uh, now it's like, uh, Ouch. Uh, uh, it's, uh, I think it's 960 gig. It's like 1500 quid, right? Mm. And you buy three of those. That's expensive. Uh, and the rental market's terrible. Uh, we would lo- stockpile these a lot for summer festivals and things, of course. Um, because so we're flying the X7, but sorry, SSD costs like that's the that's that's the, the worst. That's my, I would say, the worst quality about DJI for me. 
Okay. Is there SSD prices? But again, you know, we, we, we have seen obviously a change in the DJI release schedule and that type of thing where the i3 is as, as, as uh, I think a lot of us have, 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 have known that, that that's, that's ready um, or was ready at least, or very nearly ready. Um, but, but was, but was shelved for a period of time, whether that was to do with the situation in the U S whether but, it was to do with chip and all the other things, who knows, but, but I, I just had to buy like a thousand pounds of SSDs today for a live show we're doing uh, coming up. And a one terabyte SSD is 80 quid for a Samsung high-speed drive. Mm. But DJ charged me 1500 for the same thing in a slightly different case. Yeah, because... because you've pre- no I think somebody said before there are Samsung SSDs in the DJI case anyway. Because you have no option. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. See, well, in, in actual fact, Chris C, you, you, uh, as, as we're going off at slight tangents here, um, uh, Chris C raises a, an interesting point of why are e-scooters allowed with apparently no regulation? They're already causing in- injury. That's interesting. That's an interesting story. There was actually a news article on Geeks Varna a few months ago where and I, I think I called it something like the hypocrisy of 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 of, uh, of regulation from the point of view that e-scooters are being trialed and then obviously being rolled out to be legal when there actually has been a death on on an e-scooter in london and many injuries and lots of and lots of it's damage the same, it's, it's, it's the same with bikes because technically a, a, an electric bike um a pedal cycle is um uh, electric propelled vehicles so therefore mm. comes on the road traffic act yeah but the we, but the we, scooters at the moment they're, they're, they're mm. you know they 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 are not allowed to be used on 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 yeah because they're, they're roads. under the, I think it's the road is, traffic act is are, a motorized vehicle but that, yeah. yeah you can't be in a council trial i think the hypocrisy of that's worse yeah that you can have mm. a council trial or you can rent it from the council that's right oh, that's basically, so you, can, so you that, can pay the government to use it exactly but you can't use it yourself which is exactly yeah, what have, i said in my news story we have we have e-scooters here all over helsinki we yeah. had a death this week as well actually we, which is we, but, but you see it's money time. but it's 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 money it's it's the fact that the the large european uh companies who who, who are as 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 um uh, stephen's saying are, are are running rentals um across europe they want to come into the uk and uh, rent these things to us to get around london it's and Birmingham same with segways and, and things as well yeah, no, absolutely. Which, which of course, right. which of course, with Segway, the the chap who who is it who originally had the company chip. or who mm. bought the company, one of their CEOs, yeah, actually went off the cliff and died on a Segway. On a Segway. <laughs> That's just, I, was, I don't, I don't mean to laugh about that, but no. that was just you know, it was like a film. It was it was almost like a naked gun film yeah, where you know, the yeah. person who invents it That's goes right. off the cliff on it. That's right. The, to be fair, the uh, they had just released some statistics regarding the e-scooters here. And the level of injuries had reflected people that had been drinking. So it was all alcohol injuries. Well, have you seen these pedal bike things with bar- or bars that go around city centres? Yes. I, I how do people not fall off those and hurt themselves? They're in live public roads. They're all hammered as anything. And and they rock. And, they rock a bit as well. Don't yeah, they, yeah. And things. Depending and, on you know, and you're still serving them alcohol while they're pedaling. For, for anyone that's wondering, these are basically these long uh, bikes, essentially, where you're actually facing each other with a table. There's even a little cover in case it rains. Mm. But everyone's got pedals, so you it's pedal along. Five There's obviously on the one a driver, end. a responsible driver at the front who is steering the thing. Uh, but then, yeah, everyone's riding along whilst doing. Yeah, who's also pub serving. Calls drinks normally as I well know, yeah. yeah yeah and also you know exercise makes alcohol to your head more it does it does exactly um oh are we getting a geeks vana one of those we should we should jim one a geeks vana what uh one of those tour things the beer thing let's get a gym one uh, three of us and some members cycle around mm. somewhere maybe that, gatwick runway what, what could possibly go wrong what could yeah. possibly let's go do, wrong? let's do laps of the gatwick perimeter road on it while at, drinking at night time yeah and unfortunately With some flashing led lights unfortunately we, we we appear to be losing uh one or two of our uh <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a shame <laughs> north coast north coast aerial photography that's the one i'm talking about the one in belfast was lovely so my colleague and i went for dinner at a lovely restaurant belfast recently and a girl got off it squatted down beside some bins with or took her dress off and squatted down and you know relieved and herself mm. and i was just like it's just a lovely experience for tourists. Mm. Yeah, and, and Ellis Mean was talking about a death um, uh, re- re- regarding one of the scooters, and um, um, there was actually there was actually a YouTuber who died in London who was hit by a bus 
um uh, basically not being able to stop on one as well so but just just for the beardy conspiracy theorists in terms of things like this um the people die from bicycles every day and all that sort of stuff as well you know they'll exactly. obviously want to point exactly. that out you know exactly exactly they'll, they'll, they'll want to point that this is over regulation of drones even though it's not a drone and blah blah blah, blah. The, the but a lot of these scooters are more freely available so they are lying about the street. You can easily go and pick them up when you come out of the pub. It's easy to go so are drones. If you go around Gatwick's perimeter road, they're just littered across the verge. <laughs> it's it's uh, how, how many times can we mention Gatwick without uh, actually talking about Gatwick? Uh, yeah. yeah. T- tell me, tell me you know about Gatwick without actually telling me you know about Gatwick. There you go. <laughs> a bit, bit of social media in there for you. Um, so a, a couple of things I wanted to talk about, which are coming up next week, which I'm quite excited about. We'll work backwards next Thursday, which is the 12th, uh, myself and Mr. Sutton, who I promise will be less sunburned. And I, I, f- I feel like you're feeling the ill effects of being out in the air in the sun with the air show most of the day. Yeah, the sun today was just you've got that, so strong. You've got that Thursday Glowing. night live sort of aura coming across you. <laughs> I think is now going to be the reference for people being tired. Although, of course, I'm extremely tired having co-hosted Thursday Night Live myself last night. Yeah. So, uh, being able to always fun. But yeah, next Thursday on the 12th, uh, 9 p.m. the usual time, we're actually going to be joined by Randall Warnus, who is the um, excuse me, the CEO of Otel. And we're going to be um, obviously having a chat with him about Otel, about his own sort of background in drones. We're going to be talking about the Otel drone, uh, as as um, 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 Stephen was mentioning earlier, that was used over on the um, uh, the, uh, the 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 certain project in Texas. And um, yeah, there's also going to be an opportunity for you to put your questions. If you have any questions, you can email me Sean at geeksvana.com uh, or join our Discord server. Uh, which there is a link in the chat in the description for that um or keep an eye on our community tab as well we'll be putting a post on there in the next couple of days where you'll be able to comment with your questions uh, if you have any um um for randall uh, so i'm really looking forward to that one and He's then we're very also, open actually very open guy yeah, yeah no ab- absolutely um and on also coming up next week tuesday night again 9 p.m we have another very special live stream which is a micro drone 4.0 update stream now we've had previously, we've had the Backers Unite stream where we tried to bring the backers together and we did. We had hundreds of backers come together to sign the letter that went to Indiegogo um, that uh, was a, a direct contributor in being able to knock that project back from production um, back into theory. And um, uh, we then had the backers voices where we actually showed um, some videos of people that were frustrated that apparently didn't exist um, um, as far as people making complaints, etc. We had the band footage but we showed you that. For anyone that doesn't know, Microdrone 4.0 is a crowdfunding campaign which raised millions of pounds um, when they allegedly, at the point of putting the campaign together, were production ready and needed £70,000 to finish it. They got millions from here and a campaign, uh, a global campaign, and um, another one in Japan as well, where they sold an awful lot of units. And that that was years ago now. I think we're, we, we must be hitting the three-year spot by now. And um, still no drone. It, it's still in prototype. Still no evidence of a drone or a controller or any of the other things that have been promised. Utter, utter scam, frankly. And um, it's one of those stories where we're not going to give up on it. So on Tuesday night, we're going to be dispelling another myth, which is one of Vernon Kurzweil's most popular ones that he likes to say publicly, that any court action that happens against Extreme Toys Limited, which is the company behind the campaign, is vigorously defended and that, um, um, you know, every step they take is ethical and um, at 100% proper. Well, we are aware of dozens, dozens and dozens and dozens now of backers who, um, with the help of of, of, of of one of the organizers, Tony as well, um, have put a lot of um, uh, small claims courts uh, action against Extreme Toys and have successfully gained their refunds and interest. So, what would be a good way of if if Vernon claims these people really don't exist because he defends vigorously his claims? Well, we're actually going to have the backers on live. So several of the backers are coming on live to talk about it with documentation. We've also got some videos that have been sent in from other backers who can't make it live, who, who want to confirm their situation. And we are going to show you that systematically the the way that Vernon handles these these court actions to um, uh, intimidate people and to also lengthen out the period and to waste the court's time and to waste the backers time when 
not one case has actually made it to an actual hearing yet. So that that's coming up on Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one. Well, I'll, I'm just well, going to put that on my phone. I'm just going to put. It have on you my have you announced that Vernon's going to be in the studio with you yet? Do you think he's just gone for a toilet? I didn't want to say I'm going to the toilet. But let, let, let's listen to him. We can see the, the toilet flush. What, what were you asking about, Vernon? Uh, have you announced yet that he's going to be in the studio live with you with the actual <laughs> drone? I'm just. Is I'm that, just going to. Have I let that out of the bag? Oh, sorry. I'm. I'm just going to put it on my phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so good Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, nine PM. Okay, right. It's on my phone. It's okay. Hilarious. You're 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 a funny, funny man. But it's it's but it's it's good to see you addressing it and and embracing it. Frankly, um, I think so. So yeah. So um, it's reminded me of Dom Jolly now. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I apologize to anybody who's wearing headphones for that that last outburst. Um, but hello, um, Americans won't know who he is. But that's sounded more like the dead pirate sketch. <laughs> hello, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that, that, that's on Tuesday at 9 pm, which is going to be um, uh, a very interesting stream. We have actually, on one of the rare occasions where we have genuinely invited Vernon to attend, um, so um, I think we'll probably see him potentially. I, I to be honest, I hope not. Because I, you know, I, this is more about the backers than Vernon spurting his his nonsense from the live chat. Um, so, 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 ho hopefully, we'll have a Vernon free evening and be able to get this story out there um, uh, unmolested. Frankly, just remember when he, we finish tonight, we need to. We need, just remember when we finish tonight. We need to cut it and then watch it and come back, just because you know, you know, what he's like. Oh yes, are we there now? We're gonna have to come back out of the. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Somehow, yeah. I, I, I think he hires. Oh no, Vernon! You tricked us! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Yes, uh, this isn't really this isn't really a computer where I can press a button to go into the outro, and then come straight back from. Uh, you know, this isn't completely. You know, this is once the credits roll, it must be over. There's there's no way of coming that's back. Cause, that's because that's because he thought you were using the same operating system they use for their drone. That's why. <laughs> Indeed. So, yeah, but again, you know, we we mock, but this is a very serious situation. Tuesday night is going to be another step forward on this. And frankly, you know, I, I want to show that this is somebody who, who is who is who is running a company who isn't doing so responsibly, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be an interesting evening, but certainly you're not going to be able to deny your backers and deny those. Because the, one of the issues is, of course, that once you once you get your refund through the court action, and it comes the that refund actually comes through the Indiegogo system, which he claims he can't do, um, uh, but of course he can when someone takes him to court. Um, the issue there is that you then get dropped off the Indiegogo system, so you can't comment on the campaign page anymore. So of course all these people that have successfully taken action then actually drop off the page. So you know he's able to say, oh no no, there's no one. Even despite others actually post and 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 some of the backers have actually been putting on there. This person's just had a successful claim. That person's had a successful claim. Um, um, yeah, but, but but there we go. We'll we'll have to wait and see what happens there because it's going to be very very interesting, indeed. Um, right. So that that that's next week on the live streams. We may also be having some more of the impromptu ones. They've been working quite well so far. When we do get breaking news or an interesting uh, story that I want to chat to you about. My studio two, which is our tech studio and the sofa studio, the sofa, the Geeks Vana sofa <laughs> is very nearly ready. We're just Don't make in it the, sound weird. We're just in the, the final um, uh, testing stage of audio and that type of thing, which is so frustrating to get audio right, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you are aware that you're currently a bad Chinese film right now because you're sort of sync. Am I? Yes. <sighs> <sighs> People are commenting and it is they are right. I'm watching the Zoom link and it's you are you are looking like a very badly subtitled film into English. Fantastic. Friday. Well that's, that's, that's Tell me why. <laughs> I don't like Fridays. Tell me why. I'm not gonna stream on Fridays. Because I hate yeah. streaming on Fridays. So there we go. Uh, excellent. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Th thank you, Andy. I can see that. Um, I, I think it's actually because we're using the new Elgato face cam as the camera, so that um, I can give my uh, mirrorless A6400 uh, a bit of a break at the moment because um, I'm a little bit worried about it always being being switched on the whole time as as the live cam. Uh, but there's clearly some more work to do to get this tech. We are actually swapping everything over to a new system very very soon, and what could possibly go wrong? 
I was genuinely really hard to watch you right now. <laughs> I think it's it, just like I think it, it will I'm be trying worse to work out my well. my head hears what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But like my my eyes can't work out what you're saying. Let's go <laughs> to an ad break. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it works weird. even better when it's actually out of, out of sync uh, excellent yeah. so as i say thank you very much for joining us everybody it's a really consistent crowd in here tonight um i really appreciate it does that help does that help a little bit because then at least well no you can still see my yeah, that, no 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 that really does help me you understand can still see you. my fat cheeks well, moving it's, move your hand up a little bit more borrow his <laughs> iphone <laughs> <laughs> excellent well as i say thank you very very much for joining us everyone as my earpiece then falls out as well um it's been one of those nights on tech and i really really appreciate you all coming in um it's 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 fantastic i've really enjoyed the news chat tonight i think that's something which we will bring into to future shows um although it probably won't be on next thursday because we'll have a special guest with us uh, sorry we're keeping you up andrew it's a long day these two falling asleep i'm the one that's actually had do you know i've had half an hour's sleep <laughs> In the last 24 hours. Do you, do you realize that? Oh. I've had half an hour sleep, and at least I'm like, you know, a little bit up and things. Although my, my language is really starting to let me know. Perhaps that's what this is. This actually isn't a technical problem. This is a stroke from this having half an sleep. hour of sleep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but there we go. Right. We'll th- you, you realize that if I had a very small violin, it would actually be a very large cello. <laughs> It's one of Can Stephen's you, famous Stephen, catchphrases. Stephen, could you just stand on the ground a second just to show us how how really how tall you are? Just get off that chair. Yeah. Oh, with you all. There you go. See, it's yeah. true. Stephen is short. Okay, everybody, on that bombshell. Thank you very much for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. Um, we are getting very close to the 10,000 subscriber mark, which is something I didn't think we would get to. So, because uh, we are a very niche channel, we're trying to provide a very niche uh, uh, message out there. So I really appreciate all the support. Everyone that's in the live chat that comes to us regularly, everyone that's there. But, you know, please don't be a dick and unsubscribe, though, and make me go even further away from the 10K. <laughs> Can I say dick at this time of night? I mean, um, I, I did try and not sw- like swear in the first hour just to help you out there as yeah, well. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, f- fortunately, fortunately, the, the analytics don't see our pre-show, uh, which yeah, is just maybe terrible. You can say what you want. It can't work out what you're saying. There's <laughs> yeah. no sync. Yes, you're right. I could That's, do that. <laughs> you have no idea how like. I know. Chan, this looks yeah, hilarious. Because it actually you is couldn't do this if you tried. Well. It's that yeah, good. That's right. That's yeah. right. It's awesome. Uh, Ellis Ming, thank you very much for put, popping the Discord uh, channel in there again. I am in there regularly. I'm in there every single day answering questions and chatting with people. We have a lot of fun and we do a lot of serious <laughs> stuff. Okay. So I'm off to get this guy some sun okay. cream and get this guy to bed. Um, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds very nice to say we're in different confidence almost. Thank so you, everybody. Right See you next time on Geeks Van Alive. Fly safe. Be safe, do all that kind of things. Yeah. Thanks for your support. From there. Do you think? Eight-o. Do you think I'm back in there. sync? One no, no I'm I'm not. even more out of sync. Hang on, hang on. Look, I can do this. Hang on. Let me do this. You're even out of sync for yourself now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Even I even I'm uh, even I know I'm out of sync. Watch this, watch this. Do you want me to really mess with your head? There you go. Now I've put it at 400. 400 better. milliseconds. That's better. Oh, you're, is it? You're closer. Oh, let's see if we can fix it live on air, shall we? I, I can cut this bit out of the show. No no one's watching now, are they? No, no, no one notices. Fine. Yeah, no, no one notices. Yeah. Uh, 500 ms. How, how does that sound? That's better. Oh, well, you look fast. Oh, now I look too fast, do I? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now you look total Jackie Chan. I wonder if it's I wonder if it's a camera setting actually on this new fandangled camera. Um, what about noise reduction? If I turn that off, that did nothing. I don't know why I thought that was. Um, my shutter speed, bring that down a little bit. Oh, 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 no. oh, 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 oh. oh I, I do like seeing your um, sausage. Or what do you call it, blue animal? We see your blue animal more then. That was good. Well, you, well, you can see it more if you, if I do that as well. Yeah. There you go. Am I, I, am I don't I remember your blue animal having sort of ja- um, sort of sharp corners. I think I'm like in that? sync. One. Two, three, oh, yeah, four, yeah, but you're, that's the closest you've been. Yeah, I think it might have been the zoom that that's, that messed it up actually. Could have been, could have been. Yeah, no, do you mean Ooh. camera zoom or zoom zoom? No, zoom zoom. Um, uh, there's a built in zoom to this new uh Elgato face cam, which is a fantastic product. There's an unboxing and a product review coming up on the channel. 
but I can I can do this. Look. I try and speak now. Oh, hello. My name is Sean. That's so. That's so. Still in. I'm a very large head. Still in. Yes. This this live show is definitely going off the off the so rails. Can, a can bit. you zoom in to Steven's camera to make him look normal height? Uh, no, I can't do that oh, kind of magic. Okay. Unfortunately, we we don't have the technology to make Stephen look her normal height at the moment. So, I mean, what? Amazon does. The, Amazon, the, chat, Amazon, the chat's saying I'm way, way off now. So you look like that's the most I've, yeah, you're really in sync for me. Um, oh. uh, there is the technology. Well, as long as it's okay for you. Yeah. Don't worry Don't worry about the dozens of people watching. We live. <laughs> yeah, we're still said, live. You said there's no technology that can get... <laughs> Stephen, Stephen thinks we've come off air. No, yeah, no, we're live. We're still one hundred percent streaming. This is because we talk. It's lucky actually. We talk shit it's for lucky. hours we after do, streams. We do talk shit for a lot, a lot of time after the stream. It's you're lucky actually, uh, boys and girls at home, that uh, Stephen didn't start stripping already. That's what he normally does. As soon as the cameras go off, yeah. these 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 fi these finish. It's the eyeball the shots of vodka. I never understand. Tell me why. <laughs> I bought shots of vodka. Crikey. Yeah. Yeah, that's um quick. Mm. Steven's getting his OnlyFans voice out, so we have to be careful here. The the AMS a, a, ASMR. A, AMS? A, 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 drone ASMR. Do we think that that's that that's a good that, channel? That's just a that's just a channel of you turning the FPV off and on. Yeah, well, how many battery cycles did I waste, do you think? Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, I was sorry, JSK, I know this thing is. That's your worst catchphrase ever. Uh, all right, let's get out of here. Let's let's let's, let's not bore these poor up? people. No, he didn't, unfortunately. Oh, okay. So, Yet. Good night. Yet. Good night. Maybe he would expect us to do uh, it once. Drone viral. Yes, you can use a normal picture. Um, there is actually, if you Google um, YouTube banner template, there is actually a Google YouTube help page that has a little template picture you can download. And it, it, it's basically a template and it shows you how your banner will look on different devices. So you can make sure that it's a nice shot on a mobile phone all the way out to the iPads and uh, to, to a full desktop PC. Um, so, yeah, have, have a look at that because it, 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 uh, it does work Oof. well. Um, oh, right. Let's, let's, go and, let's go and let Andrew drive home to, to, to bed. And Stephen now is actually is getting me doing it. <laughs> Just remind me to cut this bit off the end of the stream, someone. If you're no, watching let, the replay, let's not I do, do cut this off. Remind me in the comments. Yeah. This is like one of those weird ones where like, people film themselves going to sleep or not or going that down that road. No, I probably could sleep on air right now, actually. Well, you know, Stephen's only one in a house. What? You're not in the house. I'm not in the house. He's in the house. Oh yes, sorry. Yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. I thought you said that the opposite way round, didn't you, Stephen? I thought he meant you weren't no. in the house. My, you, yeah. Was my audio out of sync now too? <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone thank you very much i really really appreciate it as i said before uh, i love you all very very dearly uh, i'm clearly very tired and um goodbye i'll just see how long steven could hold that pose for <laughs>